2024 might be the biggest year for cozy gamers ever. Not only are we seeing more cozy games being unveiled than ever before, but this has to be one of the strongest lineup of upcoming cozy games I have ever seen. And I've spent the last couple of weeks going through all of the cozy gaming demos I could find on Steam for Steam Next Fest. And I've put together this list of the top 10 upcoming cozy games that you don't want to miss. And we're going to start off this list with a game that's been wishlisted over a million times on Steam already, and that is Tiny Glade. Now, I'm going to be real. When I saw the trailer, I had a couple of different thoughts. My first one was, oh, wow, this is absolutely beautiful, and I love the building mechanic. But my second thought was, I suck at decorating, and I'm not sure this is going to be the game for me. But when I saw the demo release on Steam, I thought I might as well give it a go. And I have never been so happy to be so wrong in my life. This is the epitome of a relaxing game, as it's essentially about doodling a beautiful castle. And the building mechanic makes it so easy to build a masterpiece. I don't have an aesthetic bone in my entire body, yet in just half an hour, I was able to make this. And honestly, that should be testimony to just how good this game is. Now, as with all demos, this demo was a little bit restrictive. It gave you a really, really small area to work with and also not all of the tools that will be available in the final game. So this allowed you to build pathways. You could also place turrets, castle walls and buildings themselves. But the beauty comes in just how customizable every piece is. You can change the sizes of the turrets. You can change the sizes of the houses. You can pick what style roofs everything has and also make these cute little pathways ways up to each of them. But the customization doesn't even stop there. You can choose different colors for everything. You can terraform the land as well, even after you've placed the buildings. But one of my favorite parts of all of this is the ability to turn these beautiful buildings into equally as spectacular ruins. And the best part is building isn't all you can do because once you've made something that you've fallen in love with, you can enter the camera mode and take pictures of it as well. And thankfully, this camera mode is just as well thought out as the building mechanics themselves. Honestly, it takes a lot to make me fall in love with decorating. I actually avoid it in almost every single game I play. I didn't decorate in Animal Crossing. I didn't do it in Disney Dreamlight Valley. And Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise was a struggle. But this made it feel easy and made it feel enjoyable. And it basically turned anything you made into a masterpiece. Not to say that people haven't already made things way better than what I did. But I was really happy with what I did and I could see myself playing this for hours. And I'm so excited for the fact that the full release is going to be sometime later in 2024. I know as of right now, it's 100% coming to PC, but I don't know what other platforms. So it'll just manifest a Nintendo Switch release. Next up is a game mentioned in the Wholesome Direct and this is Lost and Found Company. Now again, I wasn't really sure this was going to be the game for me. You see, I'm one of those people who loses absolutely everything. I can have something in my hand, I'll put it down and it has disappeared and I'm completely unable to find it. So a game that's all about trying to find hidden objects was not something that I thought was made for me. It turns out I was incredibly wrong and I fell in love with it immediately. And that's because this just has something that's a little bit special about it. Because this isn't just any ordinary hidden object adventure, as this is one set in a beautifully immersive world and follows the story of a tiny dragon trying to regain her power. Now, the best part to me is just how immersive each of the levels are, because in this you can interact with the world. It's not just stationary like playing Where's Wally. The world moves, it feels alive, but you can also click and interact with different objects that might even help you find some of the things you're looking for. But don't worry if you feel a little bit daunted by what you see. It also has a wonderful hint system, making sure that you never feel frustrated. And it's set up so that it doesn't exactly tell you the answer, but gets you incredibly close to it so it still feels rewarding but it turns out there's a lot more to the game than just what i'm showing you as not only do you have the whole story to explore but there's also the opportunity to do bonus levels to really test your eyesight and the ability to decorate and customize your very own office along with uncovering different easter eggs and surprises and secrets in each of the levels 
This is why I love the fact that games have demos, because I never ever would have picked this up if I didn't have the opportunity to play it before, because I was convinced this was not a game I'd enjoy. And this turns out to be one of the standout demos for me and really took me by surprise. And as far as I'm aware, this is coming out on absolutely everything, including consoles, PC, but also mobile as well. Now, before we get on to our next game, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Cozy Grove Camp Spirit. Now, as you know, the original Cozy Grove was one of my favorite cozy games of all time. And I'm very excited that they've come out with a brand new game that can not only be loved by people who love the franchise already, but is also perfect for brand new players as well. And the best part is, if you already own Netflix, you can play this for free, as this is a part of Netflix gaming. The game starts you off all alone on an abandoned island after your spirit scout bus has crashed. But soon you find out you're not as alone as you thought you were, as the island is filled with bear spirits. And it's your job as a spirit scout to help each of these spirits with what they're dealing with. And this can be anything from a simple fetch quest, crafting different things for them, or listening to their stories and helping them move on to the other side. And this has everything I know and love from the original Cozy Grove, like all the daily quests that you can do, you can decorate, you can fish, but there's also a ton of new things as well, including a brand new set of bears to get to know and love, and also the ability to play multiplayer as well. And don't worry, Netflix gaming has no ads or in-app purchases. I've been absolutely loving the game so far and I can't wait for you guys to check it out. So if you're interested in playing Cozy Grove Camp Spirits, click the link in the description down below. And thank you again for sponsoring today's video. Next up is a game I didn't even know existed until I played the demo at Steam Next Fest. And I'm gonna go as far as to say this may be the best demo I have ever played and sold me on the game instantly. This is Creatures of Ava. In this you play as a young nature explorer, Vic, on her expedition to a planet named Ava. But this planet has a serious problem. An infection called the Withering is not only spreading, but it's spreading fast. So Ava sets out to try and save not only the people, but the creatures of Ava. And this is a journey all about wonder, mystery, but also discovering the planet's captivating secrets. And I love the fact that the story may begin with you simply thinking you're going there to save the world, but turns into you trying to figure out if you can save something that you don't even understand. And just maybe this world doesn't need saving in the way you think it does. The thing that really caught my eye about this is just how beautiful the world is. There's voice acting, there's puzzles to encounter, but there's also, as far as I could see, no combat either. Because although you are sometimes attacked, it's all about dodging and trying to cure them of the withering instead of fighting back. And if this isn't already enough, there's also a focus on taking pictures of the wildlife, but also cataloging them. So you can really enjoy the wonders of this new planet. This is truly such a wonderfully unique take on what it is to be a cozy game. And it has so much of what I'm looking for. And I'm so glad we only have around six weeks to wait until we can play it, as this comes out on August 7th on Xbox and PC, with the hopes that maybe we'll see a Switch port down the line as well. Next, we're going to a completely different different type of creature and that is Amber Isle. Now if you're someone who likes Animal Crossing but you also like dinosaurs this might be the game for you. This has a lot of the life sim elements of Animal Crossing but you play as a dinosaur. A dinosaur that is fully customizable not just in how your dinosaur looks but also in how your dinosaur dresses as well. This to me though has one thing that Animal Crossing was always missing and that is a purpose as not only do you do all your normal life sim activities but you also get to run your very own shop. So your day-to-day -day life is not only wandering around the town, talking to all the other dinosaurs, helping them out, but you can also gather items, craft items, and then sell them to meet the needs of the people of the town as well. But the thing that made this truly stand out other than the dinosaurs is the story. As Amber Isle, a once magnificent town, is down to just a few remaining residents. And after you kind of crash land in the town, the mayor reluctantly agrees to letting you stay there so long as you open up and run the shop. And many of the residents are hoping that your presence might be able to just save the town. 
Now this doesn't have a release date as of yet, which I think is a good thing because this game could be absolutely spectacular if they spend enough time on it and get it polished. But it's been a while since a game made me feel the same way Animal Crossing did. And this has very similar vibes whilst also being very different. And I really like that. Next up, we have Fields of Mystria. Now, I truly thought I was done with farming sims. I thought that era of cozy gaming was over for me, that I was a bit burnt out and that I needed some time away from them. But it turns out all I needed was a truly unique farming sim to bring me back in and make me obsessed once again. And Fields of Mystria just has that little something special. Also, it has a very Sailor Moon aesthetic that I live for. Now this is coming out in early access on August 5th on PC only, but there's a chance this will be coming to consoles as soon as it fully releases. Now the thing that really sets Fields of Mystery apart from the rest is the fact that it is not only a farming sim, but also a live sim RPG as well. Meaning that farming sim mechanics aren't necessarily the whole bread and butter of the gameplay. And this will see you try and restore the town back to its former glory after an earthquake wrecks havoc and strange magic begins to flow through the land. And in this, you'll be able to farm, fish, mine, and craft. You'll also be able to find the love of your life with 12 marriage candidates. There's also animals to raise, magic spells to unlock that will help you during your farming and adventuring, and 30 villagers to get to know and follow their stories. And whilst the farming sim mechanics were really well done, the town was a lot of fun to explore, and I can really see there being so many different aspects to this game. The part which truly stood out was just each of the characters. All of their personalities truly shone with the writing. And I'm so glad we've got a farming sim that's given each of the NPCs an RPG-like treatment with backstories and personalities that make you want to get to know them more. And even though the demo basically starts you off at the beginning of the game, typically the slowest part when you start a brand new farming sim, the game didn't feel slow or repetitive. It just felt really fun and new and exciting and I haven't felt this way about a farming sim in so so long and although we won't be playing the full release for a little while I am really excited to see what they can do with this as this has a lot of promise. Next up is Tiny Bookshop. Now I was pretty excited about this game from the moment I heard about it but after playing the demo this is truly a game I cannot wait to play because let's be honest the whole game's concept already had me sold. As this sees you leave behind everything you know and love to open a tiny bookshop by the sea, where you're in charge of stocking the bookstore with different books, choosing which location you want to set up at depending on the weather and what events are going on, buying different books from all the locals, and also decorating this little shed to your aesthetic as well. And I love the fact this combines two of my favourite genres, as it not only has management style gameplay with the whole handling of the bookstore itself, but the way you interact and deal with customers also makes this feel like a very narrative based game. And both of these fused together work beautifully well. And although I thought I was excited before I played the demo, the demo really solidified just how good of a game this is going to be. Now, one thing that really caught me by surprise was the fact that each of the books that you can sell are also real existing books. So when different customers come in and say, hey, I want a book of this style and this nature, and you're going through each of the different books, reading the blurbs to figure out which book will suit them the best. If you like the sound of one of the books that you're reading about, you can go look it up and buy the book and read it yourself, which I think is so cool. I also love the fact that literally everything about this game has a purpose. Different decoration items you place will enhance your shop in some shape or fashion. The books you buy will have an impact on the other books you buy. So for example, the more books of one genre you stock, the more likely people are going to buy that genre and even down to which location you pick on each day. Like for example, if it's a super sunny day, then your best bet is to probably go and set up your shop by the ocean on the beach and try and catch beach goers there. Whereas if it's raining, then you're better off picking somewhere else. This was one of those demos which I just wanted to play over and over again. And I genuinely can't wait for them to finally announce a release date and tell us what platforms to expect this on. Next up, we have Gordlets. And this is another demo that's currently available for you to play and hasn't ended yet. 
This is an easygoing sandbox game about building towns for little vegetable people. And you really get to create a town from the ground up because you're able to draw the landscape beneath you and pick what is grass areas or beach area. You can place all the buildings you'd expect to find in a town from houses, town halls, campsites to lighthouses. And of course, you can even decorate as well, making this town feel really alive and lived in. Now, I was already pretty impressed by all the different decoration items, even though not all of them were available in the demo. But one thing that caught me completely by surprise was the fact that if you clicked on any one of the buildings, you could then go and decorate the inside of each of the buildings, with there being a wide array of different decoration items that are for interior only. And not only do you get to decorate houses for each of these vegetable people you can even see them in them as well this game gives you all the tools to make some spectacular towns and i can't wait to see what people do with all of the little details i especially love the fact that you can fully control the day and night cycles and also the weather as well to capture your town in every single season and one cool feature is the fact that not only can you actively play this game by decorating and setting up the town, this can also be played as an idle game as well. So you can simply just sit back and watch your little vegetable people go about their daily lives. And this is the perfect game to play while watching like your comfort movies, comfort TV shows, whatever you're up to at the moment. And there's definitely a space in my repertoire for a cozy game just like this. Another game whose demo absolutely blew me away is After Love. Now this is made by the makers of Coffee Talk, so we already knew it was going to be pretty incredible. But what I didn't expect was for the demo alone to blow me away and make me so emotional. This is a slice of life adventure set in modern Jakarta. And much like Coffee Talk, they've not only made this a visual novel, but also made this interactive as well. But because the main character plays in a band, instead of having mini games to do with pouring coffees, this is all about the rhythm games. Now in this you play as Rama, a young musician struggling to move on after the death of his girlfriend, Sinta. And despite his friends and bandmates best efforts, even after over a year, he still hasn't found a way to move forward. And because of this, he's neglected his own mental health and his relationships. But soon you figure out why he's struggling to move on, because he can still hear Sinta's voice in his head. But the issue is, in 28 days, he has the most important gig of his life. So it's time to either crack on with his music or else his bandmates will finally leave him. And the choices you make, the friendships you try and rekindle and the connections that you try to regain will all affect the story. The demo already was heart-wrenchingly beautiful. Much like Coffee Talk, the writing is fantastic and made these characters come to life in such a short amount of time. I'm really glad this is coming to the Nintendo Switch, but this is definitely a game where I will have my tissues at the ready. And although I wasn't too sure that a game could ever live up to Coffee Talk for me, just from the demo alone, I think this is going to give it a run for its money. Next up is another farming sim with a very different vibe, and that is Everholm. In this, you play as Lily, who begins the story with her sister disappearing and finds herself on a mysterious island. The only thing is she has no memories whatsoever about where she is, but everyone in this town not only seems to know her, but also knows about her missing sister. So it's up to you to not only start a brand new life, but also do your best to uncover the mystery of Everhome in what is what they call an open-ended minimalist RPG. But this is a farming sim with a little bit of a difference, as the focus is less on all the normal farming sim stuff and more on relationships as it's up to you to talk to the residents, gain their trust, and figure out how they've wound up stuck here in order to try and uncover the mystery. And although this is cozy on the surface, there's definitely a darker undertone. As not only will you be farming and living your best life above the ground, there's also dungeons to delve into as well. And considering the story isn't a linear one, there's no right or wrong way to uncover its secrets. I think 2024 is the year where just being a normal farming sim isn't enough and you're going to have to bring your own spin, your own character into it. And this truly looks to be something a little bit different. Next up is On Your Tail, which is coming on Nintendo Switch and PC sometime in 2024. Now, we did see a trailer for this in the Wholesome Direct, but genuinely, I don't think the trailer did this justice, as this demo was absolutely fantastic. 
This is a life sim with a little bit of a difference, as not only can you explore this beautiful, charming seaside village of Borgo Marina, you'll also find yourself trying to get to the bottom of some puzzling local mysteries. That's right, this is a life sim slash investigation game. Now this beautiful Italian town by the sea which the game is set in is absolutely stunning and you're free to run around it, explore, go into each of the different shops and get to know the locals. But the part I really enjoyed was the story as this game will see you discover secrets both big and small hiding in this town and this mix of investigation, interrogation and deduction was done so well. So first up, it's up to you to go and speak to the locals and figure out what's going on. You can even bring other people in with you who might be able to help you out just a little bit with the questions. It's then up to you to walk around the crime scene to find as many clues as possible. And this is helped by a little stopwatch that allows you to see into the past so you can compare the past to the present. This is essentially a glorified spot the difference. And each of these clues get turned into cards, which you then use in this really cool deduction phase. This is where it's up to you to line the cards up and put together the order in which the crime has happened to figure out what went on. And as the game states, you can expect to be wrong when you do this a lot, but each time you're wrong, you get to figure out which cards were in the right place and change the ones that weren't. And this mix of essentially mini games to figure out the crime was so much fun to do and so unique I think this game is really special. Now what you can see on screen at the moment is just the PC footage but I think there is a demo available on Nintendo Switch as well to give a go. But as with the theme of today's video this was genuinely a demo that took me by surprise by how wonderfully good it was. That's my top pick of 10 upcoming cozy games I can't wait to play. If you want to see some of the biggest and best cozy game announcements though click this video here.